and miles to go before I sleep. You're not supposed to get into a stranger's car. Not in this day and age. Not in any day and age, really. But I have places to be, people to see. It's like that Robert Frost poem, you know? The woods are lovely, dark and deep. But I have promises to keep. And miles to go before I sleep. My wife, Ellie, Eleanor, is pregnant. Any day now, the docs say. Any day now, and I'll be a father. Stuff like that puts things into perspective, you know. Changes how you view the world. Changes how far you are willing to go. So I got into the car with a stranger. Couldn't wait any longer. Promises to keep. The woods are lovely, no doubt about that though. Dark and deep too. I walked maybe 5 miles from my piece of shit car, before the stranger pulled over. In that time I met them, many of them, beings of the deep and the dark, lost wanderers and souls, pale faces and muttering voices creeping through the dusk. But I didn't fear them. Haunted back roads or not, I had places to be, and I told them as much. I have to get home, I said. Home to my wife and my soon to be family. A particularly gaunt figure wouldn't leave me be, though. Followed me for miles, his harrowing shape always in the periphery. Gentle whispers in my ear, stay with us, come with us, you belong with us. But I persevered. For Ellie. For my boy. I could feel his breath on my neck when the stranger pulled over. Cold as ice, emotionless, hollow, violently lonely. I knew then that if the car hadn't pulled over, if the stranger hadn't stopped, that I would be with them now, the lost ones, forever shackled to this road, to the depths of the forest. Alone and afraid. Thank you sir, I said climbing, into the back seat. I'm in quite a rush. The stranger reminded me of my father. A little bit older maybe, in his 50s or 60s, calm, gentle exterior. I told him about my wife and my current predicament, but he never spoke a word. Just nodded silently, eyes shifting back and forth between the road and the rearview mirror. The woods are lovely, dark and deep. I muttered to myself. When he pulled over, my mind was already starting to slip, a heavy mist descending on an already worn and weary soul. He turned around slowly, tears streaming down his face. He seemed so familiar then. Like a faraway memory of something that never happened. You can rest now, dad, the stranger said. You've kept your promise. You found me. I have promises to keep. It wasn't your fault, he continued. The brakes, um, the brakes just failed. It happens. Just one of those things. And miles to go before I sleep. Please dad, you have to move on. You have to rest. And miles to go before I sleep. The old ways. When I was a wee fucker, maybe 4 or 5, I used to wake up in the middle of the night with my mum standing over me with an axe. At first you know I didn't even see her, just the white of her eyes and the reflection from the axe. Fucking scared me though, tell you that much. I'd drift off to sleep again, cause she'd tell me, Harry, she'd say, just go back to sleep. Alright and you know, she was my mum, and you're supposed to listen to your parents and all that, so I just drifted back to the old land of Nod. Sometimes though I'd have nightmares about her, vivid fucking dreams of her swinging the axe right in between my eyes, splitting my skull perfectly down the middle. 
anyway. After a while my twin brother, Henry, would wake up too, but unlike me he'd scream and throw tantrums. Mum wouldn't flinch though, just stood there making shushing sounds with a finger on her lips until Henry shut the fuck up. Uh, Henry, she'd say. Shut the fuck up, the fear in his eyes though, always got to me. On the night she split his skull perfectly down the middle I didn't even wake up. Slept through it like a baby, waking up bright and early staring into his lifeless eyes, now on separate parts of the bed. Tell you the truth, I don't remember much after that. Well, that's not true I guess, I distinctly remember the sight of his brain, seamlessly sliced in half. I slipped around in his blood for a bit, until I tumbled down the stairs, knocking myself unconscious didn't wake up for a month. Induced coma. Swollen brain or some such. They locked my mum away of course. Still rotting away in the loony bin somewhere, drinking her own piss or whatever crazy shit she's up to these days. I only talked to her once after I woke up, and it was the weirdest fucking conversation in my life. It's the old ways, she muttered, mucusy spit dripping down her dry cracked lips. When one becomes two, you have to split it in three. Just gotta pick one, and hope for the best. Fuck you, you old hag, was my parting words to her. And you know, I never understood it. Not until I had you, Fergus. Unlike my mum though, I'm telling you everything up front. I don't know why it happens, or fucking how it happens, some family curse or something maybe, but that thing over there, that thing you call Finn, he's not your brother. We only ever had you, Fergus. We don't know where he came from. But dad. Fergus whispered. I'm not Fergus. I'm Finn. Strange that, I said. I used to forget which one I was too. So how can you tell? How can you be sure? It's like my mum said, I shrugged, raising the axe. Just gotta pick one and hope for the best. And now I'm free. I found my mother brutally murdered when I was 15 years old. That's a good icebreaker right there. Or a really bad one. Depends who you're talking to I suppose. Most people though will go into obvious fake care overdrive, with the old oh, I'm, um, I'm so sorry being the most prominent comeback. Are you okay now usually follows. Of course I'm not fucking okay, you insufferable dimwit, is what I want to say. Yeah, I'll say. It's fine. I've moved on. All healed up. And they'll go um, so, I, did they catch the murderer? Yeah, I'll nod, head hung low. It was my father. Man, the looks I'll get. It's like, they're already pitying me you know, but now we're delving deeper, to a yet to be discovered level of awkward sympathy that they just can't deal with. They'll stop talking for a bit, eyes searching for anywhere to rest but on me. She was mutilated, I'll blurt out. Eyes missing, stabbed inwards or something, tongue split in half, intestines tied around her waist like a fucking belt. Organs lacerated and stretched out on her feet like makeshift tissue shoes. Heart carved out, torn into pieces, scattered around her frame. Body sunken in a deep pool of blood and piss and shit. Like a corpse juice bath. They'll turn pale then, dry mouth swallowing deeply, looking for any excuse to get the fuck out of there. I won't let them. I need them to hear this. Need them to know how much I hate him. He took his time to, I'll note coldly. Fucking tormented her for hours. 
Thin razor cuts all over her body, like that Chinese torture method. Leng Xie or something. Death by a thousand cuts. Most of the mutilation was done prior to death too. Can't imagine that pain. Impossible. Resignation then. They're too deep now. They can't just excuse themselves and leave. That'd be fucking rude. Insensitive. So they'll sigh, and start nodding silently to everything I say, those puppy dog sympathetic eyes kinda locked on my forehead, terrified still of ever making eye contact. And I do. I do hate him. But not for that. I hate him for kicking me around, fucking me up every other day, hospital visits weekly, black and blue and yellow bruises all over my body, never to fully heal. Hate him for calling me worthless, stupid, ugly. But does he deserve to die? Number. I want him to suffer for what he did. Every second of every day, suffocating on his rotting soul. I want him to grow old, real fucking old, and never know a moment's peace. So no, he doesn't deserve to die. But she did. My mother did. So that's why I killed her. That's why I made her suffer. For all those times she looked the other way. For all those times she let him abuse and torture me. And then I framed my father for it. And now I'm free. You offered the ability to absorb the knowledge of any book you touch instantly, but the way it works is that time freezes and won't unfreeze until you finish reading the book cover to cover. Do you accept this power curse? You accept the offer. With a few mishaps at first, caused by a little overambition, you soon acclimate. Eventually you prove with a newfound knowledge of carbon dating that you do not age while time is frozen. You make your first big breakthrough increasingly sophisticated levels of theft. But you dare to dream bigger. With 10,000 children's books on hand you work at a prop trading desk at a bulge bracket investment bank, executing on trades faster than all competition by freezing time in short bursts. You are the youngest MD in their history. Soon after you buy a publishing firm which can print one very short randomly generated book every 10 seconds. They are on a conveyor belt going on to and off of the desk at the hedge fund you now manage. Already a decabillionaire, the real world has only experienced 8 months since you took the deal. Nobody knows where the hell you came from. Forbes now has a new 30 under 30 list. The best 30 word books for toddlers under 30 months but something is amiss. 10,000 years have passed and for the last 3,000 you have been feeling something lingering deep within. Like the collective human consciousness chanting. You are on the verge of uncovering the grand theory of everything. One of the final pieces of the puzzle lay in an ancient book. Thousands of years old and few souls even knew of its existence, you first heard of it in a latin footnote of a forgotten savant. But it keeps coming up in footnotes, from von Goethe to von Neumann to Galileo. Only the greats mention it, and they each only mention it once. Your amassed fortune is easily enough to squeeze a stubborn oligarch to part with the text. Ready and willing to conquer the world, you open it. Please note I have removed some pages and placed them in my desk drawer for the time being. Semicolon Aristarchus, Library of Alexandria Health and Safety Officer. The video has ended, and I'm sure you regret it. If you liked it, with your friends shall you spread it. Give me karma, give me credit, but if I'm wrong, and you just hate it, keep your calm, and just forget it. See you soon. Oh yes, spread it.